Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another edition of PSVR News. This edition of PSVR News is absolutely stuffed with just the moistest, juiciest information, news, rumors, all that good stuff that I've ever done on a PSVR News and that's because of all the crazy shit that's happened in like the last week or so in terms of game announcements and all that kind of stuff. So let's just jump right in, shall we? So let's start off with the PS5 reveal event that happened last Thursday, which I'm sure most of you already know by now, but just in case you didn't, PlayStation, or rather Sony, had their PS5 reveal event. They showed off the box itself in the video you can see behind me. They showed off a bunch of games, but let's just start real quick with the box itself, or rather two boxes, because they showed off two versions of the PS5, one of which has the disc, the Blu-ray, disk drive and the other one is digital only you would imagine the digital only one is going to be cheaper personally i'm not sure which one i'm going to go for yes i think i just want to wait and see what the prices actually are a lot of rumors going around that this thing could be pricey so i'm just going to wait and see if there's a big difference if it's like 50 dollars, if it's a hundred dollars maybe i'll go for the digital one instead of the the disk drive one it all depends on you personally whether you want that disk drive whether you have a big library of ps4 games that you're hoping will work in the ps5 based on discs or whether you're someone who actually saves money in the long run by buying used games and trading in and all that kind of stuff so do keep that in mind if you're someone who does trade in and who does do the whole used game sale stuff and gamestop or whatever you're probably gonna be better off paying the extra 50 dollars or 100 dollars because in the long run you're going to save more money if you get the disc version now it's also worth noting for us psvr enthusiasts that when they showed off this box they showed off a bunch of accessories to go along with us including a brand new hd camera now this camera raises a few questions is this camera intended to be mainly used just for streaming purposes as in you know streaming from the console you have your face in this corner of the screen or whatever is the camera going to be needed to play psvr games on the ps5 and then of course more worryingly or most worryingly is are we going to need this camera in the future for when psvr 2 eventually rolls around Fingers crossed that's not the case, I want to be done with the camera tracking, but I don't want to go into that too much today because there's just not enough details, it's been like just 100% speculation, we have no idea what's going on yet. So let's just talk about the games instead. So Sony showed off a whole bunch of games during this reveal event, you had big stuff like, you know, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank, stuff like that. Now of course me and a lot of you who follow me would have been looking out for those PSVR logos or something like that just to give us a little tease or a little confirmation. That we're getting something coming our way now unfortunately not a single thing that was shown had psvr confirmation anywhere to be there was no mention of psvr whatsoever throughout the whole show which was over an hour long but we were keeping our eyes open for certain games now i did talk a lot on this channel about resident evil ace i thought it was going to be revealed based on the rumors and speculation going around and two months ago i covered a bunch of leaks that turned out to be true down to some very kind of minute details including the title the characters the setting that kind of stuff so all that stuff in those leaks in that video i did like two weeks two months ago all turned out to be pretty true and that guy who leaked that stuff was saying that ps viewer support was included at least at the time but he has said also that the ps4 version was also being worked on and apparently now that's been scrapped all of resident evil ace is just going to be next gen only now we also saw gran turismo 7 in action and of course if you're following ps viewer at all you probably know that gran turismo sport which came out for the ps4 did have a ps viewer mode it was very limited it wasn't great at least not in terms of the content that it had it didn't have enough basically it was good but it just didn't have enough content so when we all saw gran turismo 7 i think a lot of us are kind of were expecting that you know ps viewer support to be confirmed unfortunately it never was so despite there being two big games with you know heavy ties to vr we still don't have any confirmation resident evil ace gran turismo 7 we still don't know 100 percent for sure if these are coming to ps viewer or not because there's no official confirmation so the way i see is this could mean three different things so possibility number one and this is the worst case scenario is that neither of these games have viewer support they just don't want to do us polyphony digital is like oh, nobody really liked it in the first one we're not going to bother doing this again capcom even though capcom apparently were happy with the numbers maybe they're just like well it's not worth our time we'll just focus on next gen and do it that way that is the worst case scenario i 
just for the record I don't believe that's how it's going to be or I don't believe that was the reasoning. So another possibility is that Sony themselves didn't want to mention the PS4 once during this show because they did not want any possible confusion whatsoever. They did not want to muddy their messaging. They just wanted to say PS5 because if there was a PS4 logo somewhere on the screen someone would be like hey that PS4 thing isn't that for the PS4? Isn't that last gen? Why are they showing last gen stuff? Maybe. Although, you know, that's kind of countered by GTA 5 being showed off as last gen as well. So, you know, whatever. Plus, that doesn't account for the fact that, you know, in a blog post afterwards, they could have said also supports VR or something like that, which they never did, which is kind of why I don't believe that one either. Although I do think it's more possible than the first one, I hope. So then the third possibility, as I see it, is that Sony if they're serious about virtual reality, if they're serious about going forward with VR for PS5, then they're probably going to want to have their own event dedicated just to virtual reality, where they tell us in detail, you know, how is your PS VR is going to be supported on PS5? You know, maybe they'll show off a new user interface just for VR, stuff like that. And of course, they might show off like a slate of games confirmed with VR support for PS5. And that could include Resident Evil 8 and Gran Turismo 7. That's the possibility that I'm kind of putting my money on. I might be wishful thinking. I'm really hoping that's what they do. Now, it might not be an event. It could be just like a small stage of play, which maybe that's all that needs to be. But either way, hopefully something like that comes along within the next few months before PS5 comes out, obviously, so that, you know, we can put our fears to rest about whether these games are coming to PS4 or not. Because if Resident Evil 8 doesn't come to PS4, uh, that's going to be a huge gut punch, I think. And that's going to be a big red flag for the future of the viewer. You know, because apparently Resident Evil 7 was successful. So if that's a successful game and a sequel is still dropping the VR, then, you know, that's a red flag. So topic number two then is very much related to the first topic. I've had a couple of you reach out, including Deej and another guy called Tax Refund when I was watching GT's stream the last day. So they raised the question, did we actually see VR gameplay being shown off in the Resident Evil 8 trailer, in the Gran Turismo 7 trailer? So I thought, you know what, why not bring it up? Why not look at it right now and we'll see if we can see. Now Deej gave me some time steps to look at, 24 seconds and 42 seconds I think, uh, but we'll see it anyway. But uh, I just want to look at it in finer detail, I want to see is this VR or is it just just fancy tricks with cameras and cinematic views and whatever. So I'm just skipping ahead to, I think he said 22 seconds, around here. I've got the volume turned off. So here, this is what he's talking about and what uh, tax refund, who's the guy who said it to me, he said, hint, look for uh, blinders. So as you can see in the corners, it does look like there is a blinder effect going on. But what I would say is, these are also known as vignettes, and vignettes are like a very common technique in uh, cinematography, I suppose, if that's the correct word. Uh, but just because you see a vignette in a trailer, especially a trailer where they're messing around with camera angles and stuff like that, uh, doesn't necessarily guarantee viewer support. So while I admit it does look like this, like it has a VR kind of feel to it, it's first person, it has the vignettes on the side, I'm still not convinced uh, especially when we go to the other example, which I think is like 40 something seconds. See, this is the second example then, 48 seconds, he says, uh, this part here. I'm just going to pause it here. So first thing to notice is that the vignette isn't present in this part. Uh, and I would say that the camera location is kind of weird as well, as in like his hands are kind of to the left, the camera looks a bit more centered. So unless the player is going like this, kind of a way, then I'm not, like, I'm definitely not convinced that this one is virtual reality. The first one is much more convincing that it could be VR because of the vignettes, I suppose. Plus, I'm still not convinced either that this is VR. It could be. It might be. Or you might notice a reduced uh, level of fidelity in the graphics and stuff like that because, obviously, even though it is PS5 running us on PS VR, it's still not going to be as high fidelity as it would be on flat, if you know what I'm saying. But maybe someone who has a better eye for this kind of stuff than me can kind of tell. Right now, the only evidence I'm seeing right here is that it's, there's a bit of a vignette that could be a blinder, and it's in first person. Not solid, not concrete. Let's take a look at Resident Evil 8. Okay, so I didn't get the timestamps for Resident Evil 8, but basically I'm guessing we'll know it when we see it. Keep an eye out for blinders again. Okay. Um, I would imagine this is the footage they're talking about. This is the part in the chart that they're probably talking about. Basically, once again, we got this huge vignette going on, uh, which could be argued. That's the orb. 
and I would also say there's a little bit of kind of a little bit of shakiness that maybe you could kind of see in virtual reality that you wouldn't see in a smooth pan or dolly or whatever they call it but certainly not impossible to do without viewer this could just be you know a shot of trying to put you in the eyes of, of Ethan if you know what I'm saying of course the game is first person uh, it is nighttime as well which, you know, if he's only using a flashlight, that could be a big explanation as to why it looks like there's a huge vignette around. But yeah, as I've, I've watched the trailer already, but there's, you know, there's definitely nothing... Nothing that stands out to me as concrete evidence that virtual reality support is included in Resident Evil 8. Although I do believe it will come. Uh, oh, here we go. So that's much more convincing, just by the way it's kind of moving. got the vignette again it's just this snowy area it's kind of really throwing it off if it was an interior you might have a better idea and in terms of vignette and stuff like that uh, right now he's just walking through a kind of sparse woods with a bit of snow it kind of looks like viewer that's probably the most convincing shot of this whole trailer that, that that's something that maybe should give us hope uh, this is a shout out again to Deej and Tax Refund for pointing this out to me. Uh, but, while I'm still not convinced, I still don't see it as 100% proof, it has a VR look to it, doesn't it? But it's such a quick tease, it's just in the woods, there's no. It's hard to say for sure. But it is definitely something, you know, uh, it has me intrigued now, you know? I was doubting this, I'll be honest, I was doubting this. I didn't think they were going to show any VR footage. I still, obviously, I'm still not saying that that's what it is. Uh, but that does look very viewerish. Like compared to this scene, you know, there was just something about the way the head movement or the camera movement, I should say, was kind of it looked had that viewer look to it. So look, nothing definitive, but hope nonetheless. I would say. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that. Is that foot like in Gran Turismo? Was that footage? Is that just a vignette? Is that just an art style type thing, or is that a little bit of a hint for us PS viewer enthusiasts? And same question, obviously, for Resident Evil Ace. Is that what you guys think it is? Or rather, is that what we want it to be, I should say? Let me know down below. But enough about games that may or may not have viewer support. How about a AAA game that definitely will have viewer support? I am, of course, talking about Star Wars Squadrons that just got announced yesterday. See the gameplay? Well, gameplay. It's in-engine footage that's playing behind me. Now apparently EA are doing a showcase this week where there's very likely we're going to see gameplay of this. The release date for this is the 2nd of October so it's not far away at all so that's why I'm saying it's very likely we'll see the gameplay for this. But exciting news for us is that 100% of this game will be fully playable on PSVR and this is not a PS5 game by the way. This is going to be playable on what you have right now the PS4 and any of you PC viewer fans out there it's also going to work for you and there's going to be cross-play between PS Viewer and PC Viewer. So it's going to have a campaign. Now, it might not be too long. The price is kind of like the $40, 40 euro mark. So that kind of indicates maybe it's not going to be a full campaign thing. I think the multiplayer of this game is the bread and butter, really. 5v5, first person space combat. Well, I'm not sure if it's first person entirely. Obviously, Viewer is probably likely to be first person. Maybe flat version is going to have a third person angle. I'm not too sure. We'll know when we see gameplay. But yeah, I'm not a big Star Wars guy, uh, but. Just the fact that this is supporting virtual reality. It's a AAA title, pretty much. It's been backed by a big publisher like EA. And I know people have their doubts about EA, and we should definitely be cautious, you know, that they don't add in surprise mechanics. But according to them, everything that you unlock in this game will be done through gameplay. So they're pretty much saying no loot boxes. Will they keep their word? Let's hope so. Look, it's still exciting. 5 versus 5, we'll get a new multiplayer title. Space combat. Uh, I don't know if you guys played the Battlefront demo, the X Wing fighter demo, or whatever it was called, that came with Battlefront. It was only like 15 minutes long, but it was really good. Obviously, do not expect it to look this good on the PS VR. Maybe it'll look a lot better on PC VR. And of course, it'll look probably something close to this on flat, maybe, or at least a lot closer than it would on VR. But if you're looking for a reference point on how this game is going to look, you should probably look at Battlefront 1, that free demo thing. It's probably going to look something like that which is fine with me because that was like a very impressive experience in its own right. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you excited for this? Is this a day one buy? And if you're someone who suffers from motion sickness, I know I've already had someone reach out to me saying, you know, they're concerned that uh, they won't last five minutes in this game. 
Is that something that's bothering you as well? Is that something you're worried about? You know, if you're one of those unevolved flat apes that are susceptible to motion sickness, is this something you're kind of worried about? Let me know all this stuff in the comments. And so our last topic for today is just a small little update about Alvo. I know a lot of you are like really anticipating this game, myself included. Uh, the last thing we heard about this is that they were still waiting to hear back to get a submission date so that they can resubmit the open beta build that they have ready to go. There has been an update as of yesterday. It's a small update, but it is an update. So I'm just going to read it out. We have finally had contact back from our representative at Sony that our new date request is underway and we are eagerly awaiting a response on the new days from them. So it's, you know, we still don't have a new days basically, but Sony have confirmed they're aware that they want the new date. Things are in motion basically, it's gonna happen. Uh, fingers crossed sooner rather than later. I don't think we're gonna see it in June now, probably July at the earliest, but still there is the update. I know a lot of people thirsty for any bit of any bit of juice about that game at all. And so that's it for this episode of PS Viewer News. Before I go, let me thank each and every one of my Patreon supporters whose names are on screen now. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping me keep this channel going. In particular, those on the top tier over on Patreon. We got Pete Hawkins, we got Tradition, we got Columbus Thomas III, we got Chopped 517, and we got Mr. Crumb himself. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for the generosity. I really do appreciate it. If you want to join over on the Patreon, the link will be in the description. But if you don't want to spend any money, a simple like, a share, subscribe, all that usual shite will do me just fine. One last thing before I end the video is thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music. If you want to check out Decepticon stuff, then the link will be in the description. It's Decepticon.com. You can find him on Spotify, Bandcamp, all that usual stuff that you'd listen to. And that is it for this video, lads and ladies. I will see you in the next one. Please remember to stay moist.